Welcome back everybody. It's been a while, uh, longer than usual. I took some time for Thanksgiving. I also had a death in the family. So I took some time away after Thanksgiving to spend time with my family and be there for them. Uh, but I've been dying to get back and make videos. It's It's been eating at me. So here we are. It is now Tuesday. This is take two of this video because the first time I missed focus on all three cameras pretty much the entire time. So take two is the charm for me, I guess. Anyway, it's the holiday season. It is the gift giving season. And if you are trying to gift someone a knife and you don't know anything about knives, or if you're trying to treat yourself and you have a budget of around $50 or under $50, these are the knives that I say you should be looking at because you can't go wrong with anything on this table, honestly, you truly can't. And no, I'm not including everything. There are plenty of other knives under 50 bucks that maybe should be on this list, but I don't have access to them or I've not used them, so I can't say one way or another that they are great. However, if you have a favorite knife under $50 and you think I missed it and it should have been included on this list, comment down below and let me know. Anyway, these are the best bang for your buck knives under 50 bucks this holiday season. So, as you can see, we have a pretty good spread here, lots of knives to choose from. I have some off to the side as well, just for comparison's sake, or because there are different variants of practically the same knife. I know that not everybody has the same taste or preference, and I know that when you think of budget knives, everybody's mind goes to a different place, and that's okay, because under that $50 threshold, there are a lot of similarities, a lot of the same knife steel used, which means that the differences really come down to build quality and blade shape and style choices. So when I think of budget knives, the first brand that comes to mind is Kershaw. They don't make, I, don't, I wouldn't say they make the best knives out there, but I think they make a solid, solid budget knife. And there are a lot of different ones out there like the Cryo series, which I did not include in this list or the Kershaw Leak. There are so many out there, but what comes to mind for me, the Kershaw knives that I would choose under $50 are probably one of these two right here. And really when it comes to the Kershaw Shuffle lineup, there are three different models. There's the one, the two, and the DIY. The one is really kind of the middle ground between the DIY and the two in that it has the bottle opener in the spine of the handle instead of like the Shuffle 2, which has a bottle opener on either side, a flathead screwdriver or pry bar, and a lanyard hole all in one. And the DIY, the standout feature of the DIY is that it has interchangeable bits built into the handle. You can slide one of those out, pop it in, and you have a flathead screwdriver or a Phillips head. And uh, you can exchange these bits out for really any other bit if you want. The problem with this is that these bits slide out really easily. They'll fall out in your pocket sometimes. That's probably the biggest complaint about this one. You can buy a huge, huge set of bits for a couple bucks. So for me, it's not really a big, big issue. One thing about the Shuffle 2 that made me choose it over the original Shuffle is really just the design and the blade style. I liked the Coyote Tan and I liked the actual design of the handle. Uh, the, the original Shuffle has a little, it's a different design. It's more rubberized handle, I believe. Um, and it's not Tonto, I don't think. The Shuffle DIY has a different style to it, different blade. Uh, honestly, out of all the shapes and sizes, the Shuffle DIY is probably my favorite. They're made with 8CR13 MOV steel, so they're not fantastic quality. I actually rolled the steel on the Shuffle 2 the first time I ever used it. It's just something you gotta get used to with 8CR13 MOV. It, it's a soft steel, it holds an edge okay, but it's really easy to sharpen. So with these knives and most of these, mentioned in this video, you're just gonna have to be okay with having to sharpen it more often than you would a nicer knife. Right now, I think this one is about $15. The Shuffle 1 is about $12, and the Shuffle DIY is, I believe, like $20, $21. They all go on sale very, very often, and uh, you can actually sometimes find these knives for as little as like seven or eight bucks, and it's really hard to beat that price point. The one complaint I do have about these is the clip positions. They're all tipped down. You can choose which side on the Shuffle 2, and I believe the Shuffle 1, Shuffle DIY, that clip is fixed. There's nowhere else you can put it on the knife. If you wanna step it up a notch and have kind of that similar form factor, similar size, but a much nicer knife for around the same price point, you're gonna be looking at the CRKT Pilar. This knife is wildly loved right now. It's made or designed by Vox Knives. It's from CRKT. 
but it just, it's a beautiful, beautiful knife. This one is custom. So if you buy one off Amazon, you're not gonna be able to find this one. They have a uh, copper washed blade and a sandblasted handle from EDC Alabama on Instagram. And of course my pocket logo there on the handle. But yeah, this, this knife is probably one of my favorites out of this whole list just because it looks great, it feels great. You upgrade from one of the shuffle knives, which are all liner locks. This one is actually a frame lock. And in my personal opinion, I prefer that frame lock. It's just a little easier to use for me. It feels nicer, it just feels more secure. There's really little to say about this knife, a little to complain about. You can choose tip up or tip down, though you can only choose from one side of the knife. And uh, I think it's great. The ergonomics are fantastic. You're still dealing with eight CR13 MOVs. So you're not dealing with anything that's outrageously better in terms of quality. I think the design of the knife is much nicer. The ergonomics are a little better for me and it just feels cooler to use. That, that's really all subjective stuff, I think. But if I were to choose between one of the Kershaw shuffles and the CRKT Polar, I'd probably go with the Polar today. And the good thing is you can get this thing for about $22. So it's about the same price as the shuffle DIY. So you're not really spending a whole lot of money on this. And uh, again, if you break it or abuse it, it's okay. You can just buy another one. Uh, they also go on sale pretty often. You can find them for around $15, I think is the lowest I've ever seen it listed. This is one of the, the better knives on the list, I think, just in terms of coolness factor and uh, the ergonomics of it. I don't know, it, it's got that cleaver style to it for a really cheap price point. I think that's one reason people like it so much but it is not technically a cleaver, I wouldn't say. Uh, still, it's got that cool factor, and for $22, I think it's a really, really good buy. So if you are interested in that cleaver style blade, there aren't a ton of options under $50. One of the only ones you're gonna come across, other than some no-name brands, is gonna be the Gerber Flat Iron, and a lot of people have been crapping on this knife, and, and I think it's because people who have been looking at cleaver style pocket knives have been looking at the Spider Co's and the Kaiser Sheepdog and the other high-end cleavers, and this one is a cleaver with 8 CR13 MOV, and it's just that blade steel is not the favorite of knife fanatics, but that's okay. This knife is just gonna be a beater knife, something that you abuse. I, I don't know how many more times I can say that people always have problems with these sort of knives, these budget knives and the steels that come on them, you're not gonna find a much better steel at that price point, and that's just all there is to it. This has a tiny bit of blade play, not a ton, it's just back and forth. The lockup is like 80, 90%. I don't think that blade's going anywhere, but the ergonomics really are what, what hurt this knife so much, and I think that's probably why it's been crapped on so much more, uh, is, is the ergonomics. So once it's open, there's your problem, but once you get it open, the ergonomics on this knife are great. It fits really nicely in the hand. You've got that finger choil for choking up and the blade style, that cleaver is really great for cutting. Uh, it's just, I've been using the Sheepdog. I love it. I love the cleaver and I love that choil. Getting this knife open is the problem because it's got this cutout for your thumb and the detent is really strong and this cutout is just too close to the pivot. You don't have enough leverage really to get this thing open easily. So what I've been doing is holding it a little lower and using my thumb to push the blade out with friction. I don't even use the thumb hole because it, it's pretty much useless. And that's the worst thing about this knife. The other thing, this is a tip up carry. You cannot move that clip, it's fixed and there's nowhere else to put it. That is the Gerber Flatiron. You can find this knife for about $35 on Amazon if you want to get it in stores, which you can find it at Bass Pro, I believe Dick's Sporting Goods maybe. I've seen it in a lot of different places and retail stores. That is the beauty of buying a Gerber brand is they're widely available. Uh, in stores, you're probably gonna pay closer to 40 bucks for it. Uh, and on Amazon, I've seen it go on sale a couple of times already. So if you're in the market for the Gerber Flatiron, you can find it in stores, uh, but I would say wait for a sale or pick it up online for a little cheaper. Now, when people mention budget knives, there is one knife that comes to mind for a lot of people. And this one is like almost a polar opposite of the Gerber Flatiron. It is not a cleaver. It has great ergonomics. It is really easy to open one-handed and it is a fantastic quality knife for the price, and that is the Spyderco Tenacious. People love the Spyderco brand. This 
is very, very much like a paramilitary two with some corners cut for cost cutting. And uh, it's made in China, not America. It is a liner lock. So it's not a compression lock. That's one of your biggest differences with the paramilitary two. It is a little smaller, but it has your spidey hole like every spider co, which means that opening it is a breeze, either with your thumb or the spidey flick, opening this knife one handed, closing it one handed, everything about using this knife, holding it is fantastic. And that is just one of the reasons that people love the Spider Co Tenacious. It is a little more expensive than some of the others, and it is still 8 CR13 MOV steel. I believe this is like $45 on Amazon. So it is a little more expensive. You can actually also find this, this exact version and the steel, the stainless without the coated blade. You can find that at Walmart. You can find them for $35 at Walmart sometimes. Uh, but that's the beauty of this knife. You don't typically find Spider Co's at Walmart, but you can find the Tenacious. Let me just show you really quickly the Tenacious next to the Paramilitary 2. Very, very similar knives. Uh, different price points for sure. This one originally came with the black G10 scale, so when I got it, they were much closer. But if you open them both, they're, they're very, very similar. So while I have this clip in the tip-up position right now, you can choose left or right carry, and you can choose to make it tip down left or right. There are four clip positions, and again, it's just a really easy knife to use. You can find it almost anywhere. It is a little more expensive. It's one of the more expensive ones on this list at about $45, but it does go on sale as well. And I found this as low as about $25. Keep your eye open if you're in the market for a Tenacious. And I think this is probably one of the better ones that you can get on this list for somebody for Christmas. While many people would pick the Tenacious for one of the best budget knives out there, there is a better knife, I think, for less money. And that is the Ontario Rat 1 or Rat 2. They're basically the same knife, just different sizes. The Rat 1 is the larger of the two. The Rat 2 is slightly smaller. And it's going to be a very similar knife as far as features go. You've got four clip positions. It is a liner lock knife. Uh, instead of you having your spidey hole, you've got a thumb stud. But it is just, just as easy to open one-handed. You can flick it with a little practice. Um, ergonomics are fantastic. You've got about the same cutting surface. There's so little between these two other than the OS 8 steel and the 8 CR13 MOV, but the design. The design is one thing I do not like about this knife. It just doesn't move the needle for me at all. It's so, so close, but it just, the blade looks like it was an afterthought to the handle or something like that. It just doesn't, it looks like it was pieced together from other parts or something. Maybe that's just me, but the Ontario Rat just looks funny to me. Uh, I don't know. That's really just a subjective thing. When it comes to the value, you can't really beat this knife. This knife I think I paid $22 for. What really puts this knife on the map is the value. You're getting all of the features of the Tenacious minus that spidey hole, which you can still flick the Ontario Rat. You're getting all the same features for half the price. That's insane. You can spend more on an Ontario Rat. So it comes in a bunch of different colors. You can get a, I believe a coyote tan handle. You can get a green, like an OD green. You can get a black coated blade. You can get this knife in many different configurations and those will all cost you different mounts. So while the Ontario Rat doesn't really do anything for me design wise, it's really the blade that I don't like. However, there is another knife out there, a very, very similar knife. One that looks like it could almost pass as something from the Ontario Knife Company. And that is the SA Avispa and this knife it, the handle looks almost identical, but there are a few reasons why I prefer this knife over the Ontario Rat. I like the blade shape a little better. You do get a slightly smaller cutting surface. However, this one has a steel handle on one side, G10 on the other, and it is a frame lock instead of a liner lock. And because of that, this knife is thinner. You can see it's probably about 40% thinner, or at least close to that. Uh, it is a little harder to unlock with one hand but you still get your four clip positions. You get the all state steel. You get, in my opinion, what is a cooler looking knife. And uh, I prefer this. While it's very, very close to the Ontario Rat, it is a little more expensive. This one starts at about $35, but you can actually get this one in D2 steel. So if you want to spend a little more money and you like something like the Ontario Rat, but you want to upgrade that steel, you can get this knife in D2. Again, this one also comes in a bunch of different colors like the Ontario Rat. I believe you can get this in black or coyote tan. It comes in different colors. Uh, you can get the blade coated or not. 
This was my favorite configuration of this knife and it just so happened to be the cheapest one that I could find at the time. And that is the OD green with the uncoated blade, the stonewashed blade. I like this knife a lot. This is probably at this point, my favorite beater knife. All right, now it's time to change up the pace a little bit. This is a traditional knife, something that uh, I would not personally carry for everyday carry, but this knife is one that I've been using around the house, especially in the kitchen, because this is a phenomenal slicer, and that is the Apinel number no. eight. It is a classic, it's timeless. It is a fantastic value. It's only $15. You can get this in the carbon version. This is the carbon version, but you can also get it in a stainless version. You can get this knife with different handles. So if you don't like the beech wood, you can get a walnut. You can get a black blade with a walnut handle, which is really nice. Um, but what makes this knife so unique is the locking mechanism, which is a collar lock. So you open it, you twist this, and that blade is not going anywhere or you can close it and you can lock this knife shut with that collar lock. But because locking blades are legal in a lot of places, you can also get this knife without the collar lock. So this knife is just a fantastic option for people who want something that's very utilitarian. So this is the number eight version of the Apinel. It comes in Apinel number seven, number six, all the way down to one and all the way up to 12. Each one of those versions is a different size. There are different types of Apinels as well. So you don't have to get that number eight. You can get different ones. They're all great values. This one is just $15 and they, they do go up to over 50 bucks. But this one right here, the number eight, number seven, number six are probably the more popular ones that you're going to see in everyday carries. So it's nothing fancy. It's a really great value knife. You can find these on Amazon. You can also find these in person at REI. Uh, and I'm sure other retail stores carry Apinels, but I've only ever seen them at REI. Full disclosure, I've not actually used this knife. I was going through my late grandfather's collection of knives. I've been eyeing this knife on Amazon and I've been using case knives pretty much my entire life. So this one, I can, I can vouch for case. Most of you can. Your dad or grandfather probably carried a case knife and this one, is just a classic design. It doesn't get old. It is the Case Sodbuster Jr. This one also comes in a larger version as the Case Sodbuster. This comes in a billion different colors. It's only about $22 and it is a slip joint knife with a traditional or plain edge on it. And uh, it's classic, it's timeless. This will also fit in the Hitch and Timber proper slip just fine without issue. Fits down in there nicely. Might have to do a little finagling to get it out of there. But if you know somebody who likes traditional knives and don't, they don't want anything snazzy with a liner lock or frame lock or thumb studs or anything like that, the Case Sodbuster is probably one of the best options under 50 bucks. It's $22. I should also mention that this knife is uh, untouched. This one is actually from 1988. I was going through my grandfather's knives. You can see right here, 1988, it was still in the plastic. It's still sharp. And uh, I will probably be carrying this one starting very, very soon. The reason being, one of my favorite knives ever, also sent to me from the same person that sent me the Gerber flat iron, is the Benchmade Proper. I love this. And if you know somebody who likes this style of knife and you don't have the funds to buy a $120 knife, they are probably going to be perfectly happy with this knife right here. For 20 bucks, you can't go wrong. Moving on to one of my favorite knives in my entire collection. It is the Victorinox Pioneer X. This knife has it all. If I have to walk out with only one thing in my pocket other than my wallet, it's gonna be this knife or at least one of my custom versions. But this knife right here, it's got everything you need. You have your full blade, you have an awl, which people have pointed out. I said I didn't really have a use for an awl, but a lot of people do have uses for awls. You've got a flathead driver, a bottle opener, a flathead slash Phillips driver, a can opener, and one of my favorite reasons I carry this knife from the best EDC scissors you can find, the scissors on the Pioneer X. That is one of the reasons I absolutely love this tool. Most things I can get done with this tool right here. These retail for about $45. I have seen them go on sale, not very often. Um, but there are, there are tons of different Victorinox knives but I think for under 50 bucks, this is one of the best ones you can buy. If you know somebody who wants a Victorinox and they don't want the scissors, they want something slimmer and smaller, the Cadet. It's also one of the most popular knives you're gonna see in the EDC Weekly. It's basically the same tool, minus the scissors and the awl. The awl gets replaced for a file. That is really the only difference, but it is much, much thinner because it loses that third layer, goes down to a two layer knife. 
and it's just a smaller, more pocketable knife. And this one fits in the Hitchin Timber Card Caddy like a glove, it fits perfectly. So if you wanted to pair this with something, this pairs perfectly with a Hitchin Timber Card Caddy and a Fisher Space Pin Bullet. I would recommend brass because if they like this knife, they probably also like other old school things and that brass will look old school in no time. So there you go, Victorinox Pioneer X or the Cadet. The Cadet I believe is about 30 bucks and you can find this one at Bass Pro and other retail locations. I have not ever really found the Pioneer X in a retail location. Keeping on that multi-tool trend, we have this right here. This was also sent to me by the same person who sent me the Benchmade Proper and the Gerber Flat Iron. I really can't thank that guy enough. His name is Oliver, he's the man. But this right here was something that when I opened that box, I'm like, oh, okay, tossed it aside. But this knife has grown on me so, so much. And this is the Boker Plus Tech Tool in the outdoor version. This one is not available anymore. You can't really find this version of it, but you can find it in the black G10 scales with a ton of different uh, tool configurations and the carbon fiber. But the outdoor, I think, is discontinued. You can still find them, but they're not making them anymore. So with this one, you're basically getting something very similar to a Victorinox, but this is Boker, so it is a German company. These are actually made in China, though. Um, so you have your main knife, you have a bottle opener flathead driver, you have a smaller flathead or Phillips driver, a lanyard loop, which is down in there, I can't get that out right now, a Phillips head screwdriver on the back. And one thing to note about this is that most of these tech tools from Boker do not feature the Phillips head driver on the back. Most of them are corkscrews. And personally, I don't care about having a corkscrew on the back of my knife. I'm not ever gonna need one. Even if I need wine drinkers, I probably would not need a corkscrew enough to warrant carrying one every day. So I love the fact that this one has the flat head on the back and the standout feature, a pocket clip. It, this right here with a pocket clip would be perfect. You can modify them. You can buy pocket clips. They just need them from the start. They need them from the get go. The Boker Plus Tech Tools have them. You can carry it tip up or tip down and you cannot choose which side, but it is tip up or tip down. And the last little feature right there on the tip of the knife is a glass breaker. There you go, this is the Boker Plus Tech Tool. They start around $30. Obviously more layers are gonna cost more, more, more tools are gonna cost you more. But this one, I believe you can't find this knife. I've looked extensively for another knife like this one because I wanted to buy a spare. Can't find this knife anywhere. This configuration, I can't find it. But this knife, very similar knives to this are gonna be about 40 bucks, I believe. And with all that said, that brings us to the very last knife in this list. And it's something that most of you don't know about, but there's a reason I'm including it. I, I struggled with myself trying to figure out if I should or should not include this knife in this list. And I absolutely decided to, I've not been able to put it down because it's so much fun to play with, but there are other reasons why I've included this knife. This is the Stat Gear Slinger. It is a very small flipper blade. It's compact. You can only get about three fingers grip on it, which is one of my complaints. I wish there was a choil, just a small choil right there so you could get a better grip, uh, but you can't. So three fingers is about all you're gonna get. The ergonomics are okay, but you have a liner lock, a flipper tab, a ball bearing pivot inside here, and one of the best things about this knife right here, E2 steel. Not one of these other knives under 50 bucks have D2. Not many knives under $50, period, have D2 steel. This one does. And it is a lot of fun to play with. It's easy to open one-handed because of that flipper tab and a strong detent. Um, lockup is really good. This knife is, it was a sleeper. I got it in the mail, I'm like, ah, okay. I didn't like the design. Uh, I don't like the all black. This knife comes with a gray or blue handle. Those I like a lot. They kind of remind me of a smaller sheepdog, but this one in the all black, I just wasn't a huge fan of, but I am gonna do a video on the Slinger later on. So I'm gonna talk a little more extensively about it in the future, but for playing with fidgeting or just cutting, this knife is great. The one big complaint that I have is that it is tip down carry only. So if you wanna carry this in your pocket, you've got to put this in your left front pocket or right rear pocket so that the knife is butted up against the edge of the pocket. But other than that, I have really few complaints about this knife, especially uh, once the other versions of this one get here. So this was a Kickstarter project or Indiegogo, not exactly sure, it was crowdfunded and it was successfully funded and they are shipping out now or some people have already received theirs. Man, it's just a lot of fun to play with and it is 
$50. So it is right at that limit, $49.95, barely under the limit. But yeah, for 50 bucks, D2 steel flipper with a ball bearing, it's hard to beat that. If I had to pick one knife from this whole entire list that I would recommend for a gift, it would probably be the SA of Vispa. At $35, it is not very expensive. It's everything I like about the Ontario Rat, but it also fixes everything I don't like about the Ontario Rat. So you've got your four clip positions. You've got that uh, stone washed finish. You have a better blade shape in my opinion. I just like this knife a little better, but if you wanted to go a little cheaper and get something that's just as nice, Ontario Rat 1. And if you want to go a little cheaper and know somebody doesn't want a knife quite this large, CRKT Polar, hands down. So there you have it. Those are the best budget knives of 2018 that you can get right now for under $50. Everything in this video will be linked down below. So if you want to purchase it or read more about it, you can click those links. If you purchase anything using those links, it does give us a little bit of a kickback and that helps keep the lights on here, can't, helps keep the show going. If you wanna also help support the show in another way, you can go to patreon.com forward slash best damn EDC. If you enjoyed the video and you found it helpful, hit that thumbs up button below. And of course, subscribe to see more stuff like this in the future and hit that notification bell so you're notified when I do upload new videos. You can follow us around the web. You can find us on Twitter and Instagram at best damn EDC. You can find me, Taylor Martin, on Twitter and Instagram at Casper Tech. And until next time, carry on. With, with preferably one of these knives in your pocket.